Thank you for tuning in to this installment of the Division of Digital Teaching and Learning series, Library Media and Technology Tidbits. I know that this is an incredibly hectic time of year with school starting back, but it's also a great time for today's webcast topic on action research because this is the time of year that school library media coordinators complete their self-assessments for their evaluation instrument. And action research is a part of our professional standards as school library media coordinators. It's also timely because some action research projects may require a year's worth of planning, implementing, and assessing. So I think it's a great topic to kick off this school year's library media technology tidbits webcasts. Now, for past Library Media and Technology Tidbit webcasts, feedback shows that you really appreciate the short length of the broadcasts, so I'm going to try to keep this one brief. In this webcast, I'm going to discuss what action research is. So I'll define action research. I'll introduce you to possible steps that you can take to implement action research in your work, to share examples of library media-centric action research projects that may help you generate ideas of some action research that you can conduct in your own program, and also to provide you with resources for further study. And the resources, along with today's presentation, will be housed on the wiki at this URL. So why should we implement action research? Action research is a part of our professional standards as school library media coordinators because it can improve our library media and technology programs, especially by helping us to make data-driven decisions about our programs and providing us with data and conclusions to use to advocate for services and resources that our students and our teachers need. So if you take a look at our professional standards, we'll see that accomplished and distinguished library media coordinators participate in activities like conducting action research to determine the impact of the school library media program on student achievement, leveraging resources to implement your action research findings, advocating for changes to the school library media program that are driven by those action research findings, and collaborating with stakeholders to use action research findings in the implementation of the School Library Media Program. I think Susan Ballard, in her article on action research, which is linked on this wiki site, states it well when she says that action research provides the tools I need to ask critical questions, gather and navigate through rich evidence, and transform what I learn from evidence into action. So that's why we should use action research, but what is it and what does it look like in practice? The wiki for this webcast contains links to relevant resources like Susan Ballard's article that I just mentioned, and it includes action research work implemented by the Governor's Teachers Network, Pathway 1. And I think their presentation on action research can really inform our practice as school library media coordinators, so I've included a definition from their presentation along with next steps here. So action research is research that we conduct to improve our library media programs, and as school library media coordinators, we are research experts. Now let's take a look at a possible model that we can use to implement action research in our practice. Again, this model can be found in the action research presentation from the Governor's Teachers Network and may help you with next steps. Of course, the first step would be to identify your area of focus for your action research. The Governor's Teachers Network has an area of focus worksheet that I think could be very useful for you to adapt to your library media program. So I've gone to the Governor's Teachers Network initial training wiki, and if I scroll down, I can find this worksheet that I think would be very useful. So in section two, identifying your area of focus, the area of focus worksheet that we're gonna take a look at is right here at this link. 
So you may want to start by brainstorming issues that affect student learning in your library media program that you'd like to change or improve. And you might want to consider certain criteria. For example, does it involve teaching and learning with your students? Is this a topic, an area of focus that's within your control? Is it something that you feel passionate about? Is it something that you would like to change or improve? So this criteria, these questions, may help you determine your area of focus for your action research. As you examine your area of focus for your action research, these questions might also help to guide you. Who are the participants that are going to be involved in this research? What data will be collected and from whom will it be collected? Again, is this an area over which you can control and you can make changes? Is your topic manageable? You don't want it to be too narrow. You don't want it to be too broad. Are the outcomes measurable? How will you measure those outcomes? What do you need to do in preparation for this? Are there any specific skills that you or your participants need to have before you implement any changes or innovations? And what do you expect to happen? Have you considered other outcomes? So let's look at the other steps in this model of action research. We've talked about identifying an area of focus. So after you have identified your area of focus, then you would want to apply intervention, innovation, begin introducing some of the changes, make sure you're keeping notes and records. Then you want to collect data. So that's where you'll monitor the impact of changes and that data could be from a variety of sources. These are just some examples. Your next step would be to analyze and interpret that data. What does it mean? What does it tell you? And then what will your next steps be? How can that data and your analysis and interpretation of it lead you to action? So analyzing and interpreting data to evaluate changes and planning your next steps. And then the last step in this model is to share what you've learned with your stakeholders and to publish this information. Another resource that can help guide our action research comes from Jennifer Northrup, AKA the Candid Librarian and one of my colleagues here at the Department of Public Instruction. Jennifer created a helpful infographic that is downloadable and can guide you as you conduct action research. So for this guide, we start with reflection, taking a few moments to think about our practice, thinking about our school goals, the school improvement plan, conversations that we've had um, with others in our buildings, and using that to brainstorm problems that we notice that apply to our role as school library media coordinators that we may be able to do something about. The next step would be to form our goals. Choose a problem that you feel passionate about. Establish a couple of goals that you want to accomplish in order to improve outcomes related to that problem. And some things to consider. Again, uh, we saw this on the area of focus worksheet for the Governor's Teachers Network. Make sure your goals fall within your area of control. Choose goals that are manageable. You don't want your focus to be too narrow or too broad. Once you have your goals, the next logical step would be research. Brainstorm a few places where you may find research related to your problems and goals, and even consider writing a literature review to support your action research project. So at this point, you are looking for research that may influence your next steps. Then it's time to plan. Outline methods that you could use to address the problem, to meet your goals, apply what you learned from the research that you reviewed, 
How do you plan to collect your own data? So again, we need to think about the data that we'll collect and how we will go about collecting that data. Then we'll need to work on implementation, decide on our course of action, develop a timeline for implementing the action research, and we're going to want to evaluate. How will you plan on evaluating your action research? What documentation should you keep along the way? How will you measure your outcomes? And again, the important last step of sharing our findings and our action research with others. Make a plan for sharing your results with your stakeholders. Well, we've defined action research and we've looked at a couple of models for possible steps. So now I'd like to share some examples of library-centric action research conducted by school library media coordinators here in North Carolina. As media coordinators, you may be interested in reviewing action research projects from the Governor's Teacher Network. So again, this wiki is linked on the webcast page. But when I get to this wiki, if I scroll down, I'll see here contact information for all GTN teachers. So I can click on this link. And it will take me to just what the title says, contact information for individuals who participated in the Governor's Teacher Network. So I can look at projects that they participated in. I can contact them if I need more information, clarification, tips, those kinds of things that may help me as I conduct my own action research. In addition, I can scroll down and get a searchable index of action research projects. A few of these projects were created by school library media coordinators, so we're going to take a look at some of those now. This is an example of an action research project that was conducted by a school library media coordinator, Becky Frisbee of Franklin County Schools created a project on collaboration and inquiry-based research in high school with the purpose of improving her students' information literacy and critical thinking through collaboration between media coordinators and teachers. Details about her project can be found here on her project's wiki. You can see an overview and background. You can take a look at professional articles that are related to her project. You can look at data that Becky collected for her project. Something else that is useful that Becky has included in her appendices is her action research plan, which may be informative as you plan action research for your own purposes. Kay McKinney, a school library media coordinator in Rutherford County, implemented a project on creating a collaborative space to meet 21st century needs with the purpose of modifying the library media environment and services so that the program could provide relevant and central services to a technology-based school community. Like Becky's project, you can delve into K's, including her data collection, analysis, and interpretation. In addition, if we click on Kay's appendices, we'll see visuals and a video of her library's transformation to a learning commons. Patricia Daniels of Pasquatank implemented an action research project related to genrefying the library media center. 
Her focus group was grades three through five students and her stated purpose was to analyze the effects of converting the school library from the Dewey Decimal Classification System to a genreified system much like those used in bookstores. As with the other GTN projects, Patricia includes an overview and background of her project, professional article summaries, data collection, analysis, and interpretation. So we'll take a quick look at some of her data. She includes a summary of her findings at the end. In addition, Patricia's appendices includes a presentation of her project which may be very useful for you if you are embarking on action research. So I hope spotlighting these Governor's Teacher Network action research projects provides you with resources that you can use to inform your action research plans. Another North Carolina example of library media action research comes from Walter Carmichael, a school library media coordinator in Winston-Salem, Forsyth County. And Walter received a Read to Succeed grant. He used those funds for a book club at his school for boys, collected data through student interest surveys, used survey results to inform decisions about books to purchase and read for the club, and the club met for 10 weeks and included third, fourth, and fifth grade boys. After the book club, he collected more data, for third grade, he compared reading scores from the beginning of grade reading test to the scores on the end of the year's reading test. For fourth and fifth graders, he compared last year's EOG to this year's EOG. He also compared the circulation rates of the boys in the club to the average circulation rates of the school. A promising finding was that students in the club had a 63% increase in circulation from the previous year. The data from Walter's research helped inform his practice for this coming year, such as informing his purchasing decisions. He decided to increase the circulation limit because he found that he did not have additional losses with the boys in the book club. He added graphic novels to the collection and a surprising outcome was that girls felt left out in his school and wanted to start a book club for them. So he's planning for that as well. You can contact Walter for more information about his project and I've provided his contact information on this Library Media and Technology Tidbits Wiki. In addition to a link to Walter's contact information, I've also included on the wiki links to other articles that discuss action research relevant to school library media programs that you might want to consult as you plan your action research. Additionally, through the home base professional development system, you can take a self-paced online course called Action Research for the Classroom. Although it focuses on the classroom, it definitely translates to library media as it will help participants determine an area of focus, collect data, and interpret the results. The course may also help you share your research as it contains activities and information related to writing up your results. If you are not familiar with the Home-Based Professional Development System, you may want to take a look at March's Library Media and Technology Tidbits webcast as Deborah Goodman demonstrates how to access and use that component of home base. Thank you for choosing to spend your valuable time considering action research and how it will help you implement your professional standards and strengthen your school library media programs. I hope you found this webcast beneficial to your practice and would appreciate you sharing your thoughts with me in the feedback form on the wiki.